This is the pond. This is where it all began. About, mm, about six years ago, I was at this very pond near my parents' house, and it's where I started asking God some questions. You know, why, Lord, why should I go to church? You know, if it's about some guy's sermon, I can look that up on a podcast. If it's about worship music, I can listen to that on iTunes. You know, if it's about Christian community, I have great Christian friends. So what is this whole church thing about? And in my mind's eye, I saw the word communion. And I kind of tucked that in the back of my mind for a long time, over a year. And on Sundays, instead of going to church, I would come here to this beautiful pond to spend time with God. My parents and I, we would call it Church at the Pond. It was just me with my Bible trying to just investigate the faith and just be with God and, and really take that personal relationship with Jesus Christ to its logical extent as an individual could. But I kept coming cro across verses that were kind of disturbing to me. Like in 1 Peter chapter 5, it says, Likewise, you who are younger, submit to your elders. And I would say, Lord, oh goodness, who are my elders? Who am I submitting to? And, you know, in our, our culture, submission, that's, a, that's kind of a dirty word, but I started to, to think about that. And, you know, I, I want to come under authority, but I don't know, like, who has the authority? Where is this? And it was about a year later after I started asking these questions here at this pond where I ran into a good friend who had just finished or was finishing his seminary degree at a Protestant seminary in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And he and I had been part of this charismatic Baptist church before. And before that, I was part of a house church, actually. And, and my whole heart by with doing house church and with doing the discipleship training school that I did at that charismatic church, my whole heart was, I want to be part of the early church. And so my friend, Ethan, he, he said to me, Eric, I, I know your heart burns to be part of the early church, but I think I found it. It still exists. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> Show me, like, what does this mean? And uh, he talked to me about apostolic succession, how when Jesus appointed the apostles with Peter as the head, like, they left successors, these bishops, and we actually have their writings. And I was like, no way, really? And so he got me to read the early church fathers. St. Ignatius of Antioch, who was a disciple of the Apostle John. St. Polycarp, one of my favorites, who was the first martyrdom story that we have outside of the Bible that's recorded. St. Justin Martyr and, and St. Irenaeus and all these saints that I started reading these, these writings. And then that word that came roaring back into my mind's eye, that word communion. Because I saw in these writings that these early church fathers, they centered their whole worship and their life on this thing called the Eucharist, which they claimed to actually be the body and blood of Christ. And so there I was confronted with a reality. You know, in John chapter 6, Jesus says, you need to eat my flesh and drink my blood or else you have no life in you. And in years past, I would just kind of skim over that like, well, I don't understand what that means. Let's keep going. <laughs> and just kind of keep going, reading the scriptures without really contemplating what that meant. But see, what Jesus meant in those verses is the very life of the early church. In the breaking of the bread, which the early Christians, that was code for the Eucharist. Because they knew him, it says in, in Luke 24 on the road to Emmaus, they knew him in the breaking of the bread, in that intimate communion, that, that Eucharist, that that body and blood of Christ. And so I quickly learned the Eucharist, that's Jesus Christ under the appearance of bread and wine. No wonder they, they centered their whole worship, their whole life on the Eucharist. And then I was confronted with a reality. I had been Christian for almost my whole life. Basically I was baptized in first grade with my whole family, grew up in various non-denominational um, Baptist, churches, different different types of churches, and, and went to a Christian camp growing up. I was confronted with this reality that 
I was a Christian my whole life and nobody told me what the Eucharist was. Nobody told me that to be a Christian, according to the early Christians, was to center your whole life on this thing called the Eucharist. I was offended. I was like, wait, what? And I was a little angry. Like, why didn't people tell me about this? And so I wanted to tell you all about the Eucharist. <laughs> yes, it is the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And see that, when Jesus Christ is lifted up, when that, when Jesus Christ crucified is represented and made present, he draws all men to himself. And so, yes, the Eucharist, that I, found, I came to find out that the Catholic Church, which once again, I thought the Catholic, Catholic, oh, can anything good come out of the Catholic Church? Like, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And the answer is yes, Jesus. <laughs> the Catholic Church for 2,000 years, uninterrupted, has centered her whole worship, her whole life on Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. Not only that, but I finally found an answer to that long-standing question of who are my elders, who should I submit to? Well, the word elder is presbyter, which, which is where we get the word priest from. And in the early church, I found out that there was this hierarchy that was established, bishops, priests, and deacons from early on. And St. Ignatius of Antioch, once again, that disciple of the Apostle John said, you need to submit to the bishop as if he's Jesus Christ in your midst. I was like, what? <laughs> Who is my bishop? And I found out the bishops in union with the successor of Peter, the Pope, They've carried along the torch of faith undimmed throughout this 2,000 years that we call the church age. And so then I, I realized, yes, I need to become part of this. I want to submit to the authority that Jesus Christ established. Not some weird system of patriarchy or anything like that. No, something that God himself established, ordered to my good and his glory. And, and so these were some of the thoughts that were huge shifts in my mind that transformed me into a Catholic. You know, a big thing with submission to authority is I was craving that because I would read the scriptures and by virtue of my baptism and, and growing up and all of that as a Christian, I have the Holy Spirit in me. And the Holy Spirit lives in my other brothers and sisters in Christ who aren't part of the Catholic Church and who are part of the Catholic Church. And yet, we would come to different conclusions about the scriptures and sometimes it would be big things, like major things, like this thing called the Eucharist. Like, how can this person over here say it's this thing and they have the Spirit and I have the Spirit and I'm saying it's this thing. Who's right? There has to be some sort of authority, like good authority, God-given authority. They can say, this is what we've always taught. This is the faith that's handed down from Jesus to the apostles and their successors. It's the faith once delivered to the saints. And I gotta say, you know, I never thought in a million years I'd become Catholic, but I would encourage you to check out the Catholic Church. What if it really is the church Jesus started? What if this whole thing called the Eucharist, which is Jesus Christ in our midst today, what if that's true? What if you can come in contact with the person of Jesus Christ in a whole new way, a most intimate way? You know, if you believe in a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, then you're gonna love the gift of himself in the Eucharist. No greater intimacy can be had. For he says in that John chapter 6, in, the, in those verses, that when you eat his flesh and drink his blood, you abide in him and he in you. He wants to abide in you. He loves you. He really loves you. And so I'd encourage you to start exploring the Catholic Church. And maybe sometimes in our lives, we have to go to some place called the pond, you know, to reflect and just be with God 
and ask the tough questions. Ask the tough questions. Wrestle with God. He can handle it. And he's a gentle and kind and good shepherd who will lead you to green pastures and who wants to nourish you with his very life. Hmm. <laughs> Welcome to Church at the Pond.